the Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics for funding this study. The COVID-19 pandemic led to mitigation strategies, including a citywide lockdown in Philadelphia on March 16, 2020. These strategies adversely impacted city residents, particularly low-income racial minority families. As a result, residents sought out government-funded safety net programs, while at the same time, these programs pivoted toward a virtual service delivery model. So our aim was to determine changes in use of, need for, and adjustment to a virtual service delivery model for safety net programs among low-income families of children uh, during the current COVID-19 pandemic in Philadelphia. Participants were recruited from an ongoing randomized clinical trial. They were surveyed on safety net program use prior to and after Philadelphia initiated pandemic mitigation strategies on March 16, 2020. The surveys queried participants on applications for and receipt of services from a number of different safety net programs. A subset of participants were purposely sampled for interviews to identify perceptions of and barriers and facilitators to program use. So these are our results. We enrolled 95 participants. The majority self-reported as African-American with annual family incomes less than 55,000 and with a high school education or less. We observed a uh, substantial increase in the proportion of participants who applied for and received benefits under unemployment assistance, but a substantial decrease in the proportion who applied for and received benefits from the other uh, safety net programs. In interviews, uh, participants perceived that programs that had online applications pre-pandemic transitioned well, but programs that lacked an online presence also had poor personal assistance and did not have timely responses to help them with transition to virtual applications. Also, participants perceived the benefits generally were maintained post-pandemic, but may have become insufficient due to a growing need and demand for additional services. Communication was perceived to be important to keep participants updated, particularly when using multiple modalities, but it became a real source of frustration when communication was perceived to be poor. The success of virtual visits was really dependent on providers' online skills and participants' internet connectivity and access. As a result, uh, some favored in-person or hybrid service visits. Thank you so much.